Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowds with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Jesus and his disciples have been travelling from town to town. Jesus had been teaching about God and showing God's love through his words and through his actions. The disciples knew Jesus was special, but just how special was he? Jesus asked of his disciples, Who do the people say that I am? And they respond by telling him what they have heard. Some say you are John the Baptist, others that you are a prophet. By saying these things, it meant that people could see something special in Jesus. Jesus wasn't just any teacher to them. They felt he knew God and that he clearly reflected God's love to them. The poor, the lost and the sick felt, in, felt included and accepted by God through Jesus. Jesus doesn't only ask the question of the people. He turns the same question on to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? Immediately Peter responds with, you are the Messiah. This is Peter's stated declaration of faith in Jesus. At that moment, he not only recognises who Jesus was, he clearly stated it out loud in the presence of others. Jesus was the one the Jews had long been awaiting, the one sent by God to guide the people back to God. We are still asked this question today. Who do we say that Jesus is? Being even more personal, who do you say Jesus is? How does your heart respond to this question? Is the answer like Peter's, immediate and firm? Or is it a more measured or more academic response? Jesus wants us to recognise who he is. He wants us to see God at work through his life. More important than that, he wants us to respond through our words and through our actions. Following Jesus isn't easy. After Peter's declaration, Jesus teaches them that the Son of Man, a term Jesus uses to describe himself, will be rejected by the religious authorities, will suffer and die and three days later be raised to life. This is not what they expect to happen to the Son of Man. So Peter takes Jesus aside and rebukes him. By doing this, he is showing that this is not what he wants to hear. What he wants to hear is that Jesus will overthrow the religious authorities and chase away the Roman oppressors from around them. Jesus looks around him and makes sure the people are listening as he in turn rebukes Peter. Get behind me, Satan. By saying this, he is not calling Peter evil. He is saying, stop looking at things from a human perspective. If you want any of you want to be my follower, you need to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. My understanding of this statement is that what we expect and what God wants from us can be two completely different things. 
as humans, we tend to want what we want and we want it now. Jesus demonstrated that God does not work like that. By putting aside what we want or expect, we can become more open to God, open to new challenges, to new experiences, and open to making a difference in the lives of other people in ways we do not realise we can. We are told by Jesus, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. By putting God first, we do not lose self. Instead, we ourselves become part of a much greater experience. Are we willing to follow Christ and put God first? To be open to things that may stretch us or challenge us, or even make us feel uneasy. Knowing who Jesus is deep in our soul and declaring that faith out loud, possibly in front of others, is a start. Following Jesus' example is a challenge. Putting aside what we want in favour of what is best for others can be very challenging. Putting God first can be difficult, but the rewards far outweigh the discomfort. But we live under some good news, and the good news is this. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Thanks be to God for his love for us. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you came to show us the love of God through your words and your actions and for those of your disciples. We have come to know you. Help us in turn to follow your example and to reflect your love through our own words and our own actions to the people around us. For when we follow you, we do not lose self. Instead, we gain. We gain a stronger relationship with you. Help us to give of ourselves, to help others. Help us as we get to know you more, to be able to say and to show less of ourselves and more of you. Be in our lives and remain alongside us, we pray. Amen.